Hi there. Here's a very quick tutorial on how to set up a graph using error bars uh, of standard deviation. So here is uh, a table. I've just made up the data and I've made a general table here. There's a couple nice things you might want to see. I've included my uncertainty up here, plus or minus. That's my uncertainty. Um, one thing I don't like is the decimal places are different for each. I can change that very quickly here. I have even decimal places set up that match my uncertainty. So one decimal place, and that looks good, right? And my sucrose concentration is over here. I should probably have units there, but we'll do that next time. Um, so to make a graph, I'll have to find the averages. So I want to find the average, average, and to find the average of each set, each test, I can type in equals. I start typing and you'll see it just pop up here, average. If I just typed in average, that's fine. I put an open bracket and then drag everything I want in, close the bracket, hit return, and we're good. That's one, here's the shortcut. Take this small square here in the corner. While this box is highlighted, drag down. And it'll repeat that formula for each row. So we have the averages now, that's great. Now. Our error bars, what we like a lot of times in biology are standard deviation error bars. In other words, we're going to go around the mean and show the data within the area of the mean, uh, clipping off the end bits. And, and we'll talk more about standard deviation in class. To get the standard deviation, standard deviation, to get that, I type in, and let me make that look beautiful here. Whoops, sorry about that. So to get that, I type in equals STDEV. There's many different kinds. We just use the straight up standard deviation. And I drag again the data that I'm looking for. Now, a lot of, a lot of uh, decimal places here. So let's shorten that up to one decimal place. Makes it easy to work with. What that tells us right now is this. Well, let me get the star out of the way. I'll drag this down to continue my uh, formula down here, so I have standard deviations. And what this tells me is this will be a plus and minus, this is my error bar, plus and minus, for example, 0.2 off of this data point. Over here we have plus and minus 1 off of this data point. So these will be your error bars. Now let's graph this and we'll see what it looks like. So if I highlight what I want to graph, which is my sucrose concentrations and the average that I found, if you're a Mac user, hold down the command key and drag this column. I think it's control if you're if you're using PC. And then we can go up here to insert and look around for the graphs here with the dots. What we like are scatter plots. So this one, for example. Click it. And we have a pretty good graph already, actually. Um, we can see our data points here in blue. And here they are. Um, it figured out a nice range here for us, so this looks pretty good. Now, what we want are the error bars. So, what I can do is go up to Add Chart Elements, and we find error bars here, but it's actually a little more complicated than this. If you just click Standard Deviation, you'll get the wrong error bars. So what we want are more error bar options, and over here, again, we want to customize this. All right, so we're going to customize this, and we'll customize the values, specific values. Oh, there it is. And we'll use our calculations for standard deviation over here. So on the positive range, I'll put my cursor in there, click, and drag the, or shift, basically select all these. For the positive, same thing for the negative range. And hold down shift and you click and you select the whole thing. Now, hit OK. We should be on the right roll. It's also showing horizontal bars. We actually don't want those. Usually we want the vertical. So to get rid of the horizontal, I can, where do I go for that? Let's see. Let me click these points here. And it says, yeah, if I click the horizontal bar, it says it's fixed at 1.0. I don't want that. I, I want those to be zero. And that'll make them disappear. So now you actually start to see, make that a bit bigger, you start to see my error bars for each point, and they match up.
point one is a tiny error bar. This one right here is a tiny error bar. The large error bar on the last data set, which is one. That's the largest value in these, and you can see it there. So this one has the largest error, which we could probably see here. It ranges from 2.5 all the way down to 0.2 in this trial, which is very small. So there's a big range in data. We see that in the error. Over here, it suggests that there's not much range in the data. The data was very concise throughout each trial. So let's look. 1, 1 1.2, 1, 1, 1. It's true. Okay. And the last thing that we want to do now is take this chart and add a trend line in there. The trend line will help us write a really nice conclusion. So we go in right up to this area, add chart elements, and select trend line. Linear trend line is usually the one we go for. Um, we can talk about other options as well. So here I click linear trend line and you can definitely see a trend happening. And this allows you to make really nice predictions for what might happen in the future or what might happen if you switch your data around. It also shows you in this case, for this lab, it shows you where you cross the zero on the, on the Y axis. And that shows you where your potato is isotonic, those potato cells. So that's something interesting to point out as well. That'll help you a lot with concluding on this lab. So in conclusion, that's the end of uh, this tutorial. Let me know if you have questions, drop by any time, and hopefully we can get you sorted out. Thanks.